Good afternoon. It's Saturday. It's Dr. Steve TV or Dr. Soloway here, your, your rheumatologist. I was asked to talk about gout. It's a request from a friend in uh, California. Um, and actually the topic has to do with gout in females. So one thing to know is that uric acid rises at menopause. So uh, it's long been known that typically premenopausal women do not get gout. Um, can it occur? Yes, it is possible. Is it uh, an extreme rarity? Yes, it is an extreme rarity. The typical woman that comes to mind when thinking about gout, even though this is um, just a typical example compared with the fact that they can manifest gout as if any man would manifest gout, Anyway, and this is also uh, technically a board question as well, so this is good for medical students and residents. The typical female they'll present on the boards, which is very common, uh, is a 65-year-old white female with what looks like Heberden's nodes in the DIPs. However, on careful uh, observation, you can see through the skin and you can actually visualize tophus. And this is typically in women who are on... Um, Thiazide diuretics and baby aspirin. Baby aspirin raises uric acid. High dose aspirin lowers uric acid. Most people take low dose aspirin for cardiac and neurologic protection. So the standard woman who gets gout would be 65 years old on diuretics and low dose aspirin, and she would get it in her DIPs. Now, if we take men and we add all comers, first, men start to have elevated uric acid after. Um, puberty. So pre-pubic pre males, unless they have an enzyme deficiency, will not get gout. Um, the lab value for uric acid usually uses a bell curve with two standard deviations above and below the mean, uh, and the range is 3.0 to 8.0 I believe it's milligram per or milligram per deciliter, I think. Um, not certain about the units. Anyway, the point is, uh, gout patients need to have uric acid as low as possible. It's debatable whether or not uric acid needs to be lowered um, in non-gout patients because of renal protection. This is something that's currently being debated. So your standard gout attack, um, acute sudden onset pain can occur while sleeping, often occurs in the toe or the ankle, but can occur literally any any joint in the body. There's nothing excluded or spared here. Um, so when somebody comes in and they say, I sprained my ankle, and I say, how did you sprain it? They say, I don't know. I was sleeping when I sprained it. They didn't sprain their ankle. So the couple of cases I've seen of people who sprained their ankle while sleeping, having a cast, that was a gigantic mistake on the cast placer. So um, how do we talk about gout? Well, we have an acute gout attack, we have intercritical, intercritical gout, and we have chronic gout. So an acute attack is just what it says. It sounds like sudden onset, redness, tenderness, warmth, pain, swelling of a joint. Whether it's the big toe, the small toe, all the toes, the ankle, the tendons between the ankle and the toes, or the hands, wrists, elbows, shoulders, hips, knees, and vertebral bodies, sacroiliac joints, wherever you'd like to find them, you can find gout. So you diagnose gout based on this clinical story, plus you attempt to aspirate crystals and you look at them under the microscope. So these days, uh, experts are starting to agree that all gout is really tophaceous gout, and that the first attack with one crystal, in theory, would just be in the continuum of what would ultimately be tophaceous gout. So what is a crystal? A crystal is monosodium urate. This is something seen under the microscope. This comes from a person supersaturating their uric acid in their blood. Supersaturating means if you have a cup of tea and you put two scoops of sugar and you stir it up and it dissolves, that is saturated. However, when you put in the third or fourth cup of sugar, now it doesn't dissolve. That is now supersaturated. It just sits there. So uric acid supersaturates in your body when it's 
over 6.6 and your kidneys can't process what to do with the overflow. Some people have renal tubular defect only processing uric acid incorrectly. Others are lucky and they process it and they don't get gout. Mechanisms not fully understood. So the treatment of the acute gout attack, typically steroids, injectable steroids, uh, even on multiple joints, oral steroids, if you, for whatever reason, either don't know how or are afraid to inject joints. Do you have to be uh, worried about infection? Of course. So if you think there's an infection, um, make sure you aspirate it first. Uh, look at the fluid. You always have to analyze the fluid. Ultrasound is useful in academic centers. Uh, people do ultrasound, but by and large, this is um, an expensive way to diagnose a cheap problem. Um, then there's intercritical gout. Intercritical gout is the time you feel good between attacks. So during this time, presumably, you're taking your allopurinol, which is the drug used to lower uric acid. It is the drug of choice to lower it. Um, there's two ways to get uric acid, uric acid out of the body. Um, allopurinol dissolves it, and probenicid pushes it out through the kidney. So we like to dissolve it as low as possible. Um, for people who get attacks while taking allopurinol correctly or compliantly, who are on a sufficient dose, if those people either continue getting attacks, continue growing visible tophus or getting more erosions on x-ray or having other damage that is provable to be related to gout, we do have a nuclear option called Cristexa. Um, to summarize Cristexa in a nutshell, it's an IV infusion every two weeks and it will lower uric acid to zero. If you lower the uric acid to zero and you do this for two years, you'll get rid of virtually all visible tophus. It may take a little longer, it may take shorter. It really depends on the tophus burden of the particular patient. But the results are striking. The downside is the drug is $36,000 a year. But if you can keep somebody out of the hospital and continually um, associating themselves with comorbid conditions and heart disease, um, infections, and other things that would occur from hospitalizations. You know, um, many people go to the emergency room with cellulitis of the ankle, and more than half the time, or 90% of the time, the, these cellulitic ankles are gout attacks. They end up getting admitted for a week of ANSEF just to uh, uh, find the antibiotic doesn't work, but the steroid injection on the last day always seems to help because room gets consulted on the last day. Um, so, summary bullet points. One, if you're a gout patient, um, you probably got it because your uric acid is greater than 6.6 .6 for a while and your kidneys aren't processing it. Two, you want to lower your uric acid and the, the goal is to get below 6. However, in reality, you should shoot for 5 or less. If you do obtain your goal uric acid and you continue to get attacks, then you need to think about non-compliance, incorrect usage of the product, the wrong dose. Um, well, that's uh, sort of contradictory because the dose is correct if the uric acid is three um, or four. You can then switch to Cristexa, your nuclear option, to blast the um, uric acid down to zero for a period of time long enough so that hopefully you can get rid of the majority of the person's tophus and then put them back on an oral um, drug such as allopurinol. Euloric is used when patients are allergic to allopurinol. I wouldn't necessarily use it first line uh, and this has nothing to do with the recent black box warning uh, I believe for heart disease or heart attacks in um, euloric patients. But allopurinol has uh, been around doing a great job for many decades. And uh, again, other than people who are allergic to it, there's um, 
you know, less need for Uloric. Um, that wraps it up for today. If you want to know more about gout, it's uh, my favorite disease to treat. I know a lot about it. I can talk all day about it, so feel free to ask me anything related to gout. I do have another lecture on here of about an hour and a half, and I think it is solely devoted to gout. Uh, that was from a lecture I gave at the Inspira Medical Center in 2015, I believe. Currently, that lecture is not viewable um, due to technical difficulties. I believe it's in the cloud. I don't understand how it got there, but somebody at the office is going to fix that for me. So have a great weekend and um, watch out for the gout.